guys, this is Jackie from Jack Gets Lost on the Book Hole. Um, okay, so I was trying to get creative here and include the book that the character I want to talk about is in, so that's why I'm so far away. Um, because I know I don't have anything to, this is really the best I could do for displaying the book. Um, I wanted to display the other three books in this series so far, but that was kind of hard. I mean, I was... As you can see, I had to get creative. But, um, I'm going to call these videos character chats. So, anyway, um, I'm Jackie from Jack Gets Lost in a Book Hole. And the character I want to chat about that I like is Freya from the Thorn, the Court of Thorns and Roses series. Because that's always bug me when authors just like name their series after the first book in the series that just drives me crazy it's like really you can't come up with something better than that but and then again part of me feels a little guilty because i'm trying to be an author myself and i do know how hard it is but i am going to try if i ever publish something and i make it i publish a series i'm gonna try not my goal is to not name the series after the first book I like what George R. R. Martin did. He didn't name his the first series his series after the first book. Except for the TV the TV show is actually named after after the first book. But um that title would be a mouthful. Well that his original title is a bit of a, a mouthful. But anyway, so I want to chat about Freya. I really like the character of Freya. She is awesome. Um, she is such an incredible female character. What one of the things I like about her is that she I feel like she's not I mean I'm a little now I'm a little conflicted on this because I it does bug me when people hate on a character for this reason, but I can understand why people don't like that trait is the whininess. She's not as whiny as other female protagonists. Then, you know, it's weird though. Do authors even think about, you know, think, oh, this character is too whiny, or oh, realistically, this character would be really whiny, or maybe, oh, or they don't even think about the fact that the character might come off as whiny. I don't know, but um, let's see. I like I said, I always like to take notes before I do these. They're, so I'm trying to find where I wrote. About her when I wrote my notes on her character. Um. Okay. So, uh, fill the page. Okay. So, one thing I like about Freya is that she is very loyal and protective of her family, even though they kind of treat her like crap. At least her sisters. Well, t Nesta. Nesta does. Her dad kind of takes her for granted. I think. Elaine doesn't really. You know, I don't think she takes her for granted, but I don't think. Um, but she's very loyal and protective of her family. I mean, she will, despite the fact that no one else in her family will do anything, she will go out and hunt and get the food that they need. You know, she will put her life in danger just to protect her family and make sure they're taken care of. Which, granted, if she doesn't get food for them, then she won't have food for herself. Unless she, of course, goes hunting for, you know. Then I guess, yeah, she could go hunting for herself. But then, you know, she couldn't, she would have to keep the, you know, where would she keep the food? And if she keeps the food, she'd have to keep the food at her house. Unless she lived down in the woods. And it's just, it wouldn't be fair. And she's a very fair-minded person. Um, she's... Um, and when, um, to, she agreed to go with Tamlin in his beast form in the first book to protect her family, to make sure that they wouldn't get hurt, and he was, he did offer them something to take care of, and then of course when she found out, I mean, and, um, but also, no, also she's, a, she's a bit stubborn though, like, you know, when 
people tell her not to do something, she doesn't listen, and that can be both good or bad. It can tend to get her in trouble, or it can just prove that she knows better than them. Um, I can't think of an example for that one, but, um, there are a lot of times where she gets herself hurt because she's being stubborn and doesn't listen to the guy, you know, Lucian or Tamlin or Resand, um, when they tell her not to do something. But then that also shows that she is, but then it also shows that she's not afraid and that she's courage and that she's independent, which is the gooder, the better, the better aspects of her stubbornness, the more positive outcome of it. Um, she also, she's also a bit reckless, which kind of goes with the stubborn thing. Like, in Court of Wings and Ruin, when her, um, her sister gets lured away and kidnapped by the evil King of Highburn, um, she, without anyone telling anyone, she goes off on a rescue mission to save her sister. And almost gets herself killed. But surprisingly, a certain someone saves her. Someone you wouldn't expect to save her, to, you know, help her. Um, let's see, what else? She almost gets, there's a lot of times where she almost gets herself hurt and captured and, um, because she doesn't listen all the time. But like I said, being, her stubbornness and recklessness can be both a good and a bad thing. Um, let's see, what else did I say about her? Um, she's really, when, especially when she gets her fairy powers, which... Some people could argue that makes her a bit too much of a badass, like a bit of a Mary Sue character. I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I think that does give some people that impression. Because she has all these powers, um, and she's like almost too powerful for a character. But it comes in hand, I mean, it's funny though, because one of the disappointments of A Court of Wings and Ruin is that she doesn't use her powers that much in the big epic war battle scene thing, which you think would come in handy. Um, that's the only downside, like, I'm one of those people, as much as I enjoyed A Court of Wings and Ruin, it kind of did get dampened a little, my love for it did get dampened a little bit. Because there's, like, Freya barely uses her powers. I mean, come on, she's a lot of power, and she doesn't really, she doesn't even use it in the, on the battlefield. And, um, and then there's the fact that, None of the main characters die. I mean, there's only one character that dies in the series, and other than the bad guy, and that character is only in the first book. And he's, like, barely in it. He's, like, in the first half of the first small, first, first quarter of the book. And he's, like, maybe mentioned throughout the series. But it's like, you know, the only reason I might feel a little bit sad about it is I feel bad for them because he was important to them. To the three, to um, Freya and her sisters. So that's the only reason I would feel bad. And other than that, I mean, it's like, oh yeah, they lost this person, but, you know, they were barely in the book. So it's like not heartbreaking for the reader. I mean, you might feel bad for them. But that's about it, you know, it's like, oh, I'm sorry that they lost this person, but, um, but, yeah, the person wasn't in the book that much, so why should I cry about their death? Which, I know sounds kind of mean and heartless, but, um, oh, okay. So, I just remember, I, mean, I previously filmed a video, speaking of heartless, I previously filmed a video of my book boyfriends, and I totally forgot, there's, oh, the guy from Heartless, would be on, should be on that list too. Sorry, I got off on, got sidetracked for a second there. Um, she's very strong-willed, which again goes with the stubbornness and the recklessness. They all actually are kind of, I, I feel like they would kind of be close to the meaning of the same thing. Um, and she's also very caring. She, she's very caring to her loved ones. She's very protective of them, which I like. I like that she's willing to put them first. Um, she's also a survivor. Like after what she goes, after what she goes through, 
First of all, she can, she's a hunter. She has skills at hunting. Um, so she knows how to get food and find shelter. She's very resourceful. And then after what happened at the end of A Court of Thorns and Roses, everything that she goes through, almost getting herself killed and being used and messed up and manipulated. She, she goes through a lot. I mean, she kind of, in this book, there's this whole, where she goes through the PSTD in this book. And, um, sadly, that's part of what ruins her relationship with Hamlin, is that he doesn't see that she's going through that. But you could argue that he's also going through a bit of PSTD as well. And he's definitely got some issues that, you know, messed up his relationship with Freya. And I think he needs to stay put back, stay, take a step back and re-examine himself. Maybe if they have therapy in this world, then maybe he needs to go to therapy. Or he needs someone like Rhysan to help him. You know, his own mate that can help him, you know, deal with his own issues. But I, I do hope Freya eventually forgives him. I mean, Although, after what he does at the end of Court and Wings and Ruins, I could see them going leaning into the direction of forgiveness. Um, although some people, with the way he treats Freya, would probably be like, why should he, she forgive him? Because he was essentially abusive towards her. But I think if Sarah J. Mass, and I, I have, like, I don't, I don't know, I mean, I trust her, I think, that... She, if she wrote a book about Tamlin, I think she could redeem him. I think it would take a lot, a lot for her to redeem him. Because there are a lot of people who cannot forgive him. Especially if they've experienced what Freya went through in the book. Which is, you know, he was abusive towards her. But she's, she survived that. She fought back. You know, she went through all of that. And she still came out alive and okay. You know, not 100% okay, but... You know, she's not, but she was, she got through it, and she found love again with Rhysand, and she, not just love, but she found her mate, her soulmate, her, you know, she formed a mating bond with him, and that's, that, I wonder if that's a big, that's a thing in fairies, in a fairy mythology, the whole mating bond, or if that was something that Sarah J. Mass came up with, I don't know. I guess it would depend, because the, if I had, con I might have found out if I continued Julie Cogagua's, Cogagua, ah, uh, sorry, I can't say her last name, Cogagua, um, her Iron Face series, but I kind of lost interest in that series. I mean, it was entertaining, it was good, but, you know, so, but Freya is a survivor, she's, let's see, what else do I say, um, Yeah, I think I said every. I think I covered everything. Um, about her. Sorry, I wish I could come up with examples, but I have since it's been a few months since I've read the books, so I don't remember. And unlike my friends, I have friends who can recall new details, minute details, from shows and books, and they will on Facebook when we do discussions, they will do long, long posts. That I don't feel bad for the people who are not fans of the characters there that are fans of the enemy characters of our favorite character, because these girls that are my that are still my friends will like they come up with really good arguments, and it's very intimidating. I mean, imagine what they would say about this series. I mean, I would be afraid what criticisms they would have for this series. Because I'm sure there are a lot of problematic elements in this series. Like, people say that Sarah J. Mass isn't good at, very good at diversity. Um, and then there's, you know, a lot of, you know, both Tamlin and Reese have a lot of character flaws. And so does, but then the character flaws, the things that make them, you know, are, make them characters. And real characters seem like real, real characters. Like, almost makes them seem human, even though they're not supposed to be human. You know, because... Um, but it would be boring if the fairies were perfect. No one wants a perfect character. So that's all I want to chat about about 
Right. Like I said, I wish I could. I wish I had examples. Like I would. I wish I could point out, pinpoint some specific scenes that kind of represent these. Um, these character traits they said. But I mean, someone would probably do this ten times better than I would. Someone else who decided to do character chat. But anyway, that's what I had to say about Freya. Um, do you, those of you who read Akatar, do you like the character of Freya? What are your thoughts on her character? If you like her or if you hate her, um, would um, okay, well, um, all right, I'm I'm done now. So um, I will talk to you guys later. And if you like this video, despite my really bad way of ending it. Please give it a thumbs up, and I would look. I really would appreciate if you subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And um, I will talk to you guys later. All right.